What's good everyone and welcome back to another reaction video. Today we're reacting to video games that roast you for being bad. Yeah, anyone experienced that? Before, because pretty sure that has happened to me a couple times at least. <laughs> oh, those were fun times. Not at all. Because honestly, you're trying your best, and then you make one big flaw, and bam! The game gets on your case about it. Kind of sad when it does that, to be honest, but things happen. Things just happen. Whether we like it or not, it just happens. Anyway, yeah, that's basically what it is. Making a simple mistake and uh, have it being thrown at you. Due to uh, reasons. So, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed this reaction video. If you do, hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. If you have any videos you would like to recommend that I should react to, put it down in the comments section below, and I'll react to it as soon as possible. Other than that... The link to this video will be down in the description. So if you want to see this before I react to it, then by all means, go ahead and do that and come back to see my reaction to it. Now, other than all this, let's start this video. I wouldn't know, of course, but I've heard that it's tough when you suck at video games. But yeah. it's even tougher when the game rubs salt in the wound. Oh, and yeah. there are a whole host of games that actively mock you for messing up. From insulting achievements to patronizing helping hands, here are some video games that roast you for being bad. You chicken. Metal Gear Solid is an huh? iconic franchise known for its tactical espionage action. The name of the game is Stealth. Sure, you can go in guns blazing, but it's not exactly encouraged. And the fifth entry in the series, 2015's The Phantom Pain, is no exception. But what if the player is as inconspicuous as an elephant in a cat sanctuary? Well, if you absolutely suck and are killed three times in a row, you eventually get offered a little helping hand, albeit an incredibly humiliating one. Enter the chicken hat. What? This fetching piece of headwear is nothing short of overpowered at the cost of making you look like a total dork. The first three times that enemies spot the player, they're instantly put to sleep, bagging you three free mistakes before the hat disappears. The message is okay. clear. Many players that need to use the chicken hat are chickens themselves. Huh. This is the closest any developer could come to just sitting their player down and telling them to get good, scrub. But what if, even after all the help of the hat, you still continue to suck? Well, never fear, loser. You'll then be offered the little chicken hat. This is a supercharged version that will make you 100% invisible to every enemy in the game. Yep, screw up enough and the game decides you're a no-hoper. Ouch. 
And then come clean. Okay. Did any of you guys need to use the chicken hats to clear the phantom pain? Let me know no. down below. No. I have not been able to even do that. Jeez, that's kind of brutal. And by kind of, I mean really brutal. Like, so brutal that it's not even funny. It's actually more insulting than you think. And I didn't even think things could get that insulting. Hmm. Losers allowed. In the Twisted Metal series, players must face off against foes that. in a violent vehicular brawl of epic proportions. Last oh, yeah, one standing, or driving, wins. Given how unforgiving this kind of game can be, it's not surprising that it has little time for poor performance. But when I say little time, I mean absolutely no time. Bear with me. Like a lot of games, 1996's Twisted Metal 2 has difficulty settings. Someone who's playing for the first time may well choose the easy mode, and understandably so. However, they'd be making a monumental mistake. After triumphing over the first major boss of the game, players who picked the easy difficulty probably feel like they're starting to get a hang of things. But just as they're gearing up for another fight, Twisted Metal 2 promptly shows them this splash screen. What? No losers allowed? Jeez. Needless to say, the developers didn't think much of those who picked easy mode. And it wasn't just a friendly troll, either. You literally couldn't progress without upping the difficulty. Man, if I wasn't so incredible at all games ever made, I might have shut my console down for good there and then. Outside of the world of video games, I know we're all playing life on hard mode. So why not make things a little easier by liking and subscribing to my channel? Get more awesome videos just like this one in your sub box and never miss out again. All done. Achievement unlocked. On to the next level. Star Power. We might not usually associate Mario games with hair-pulling difficulty, but believe me, some of those levels can get pretty rough. The utterly amazing Super Mario Galaxy 2 is no exception. This 2010 release... Oh yeah. That was a good game. It was a really good game at 2010. He follows so the big M again? as he hops and stomps around various wacky planets in an effort to reach Bowser. But what happens if Mario himself gets stomped too many times? Well, he gets a little visit from the Cosmic Guide. The guide will offer the player a hand, and they can watch as it controls Mario and completes the level for them. Oh, easy, right? The catch is, you're not awarded a gold star afterwards, which is what you need to progress. No, instead, you receive a super patronizing bronze star. Looks more like a poop color, doesn't it? And it does absolutely nothing. Wait, so what's the point? Well, the Cosmic Guide is probably supposed to be a helpful way to show struggling players how to finish a stage. But in practice, it just feels like Nintendo are having a huge laugh at your expense. Yeah, enjoy your cruddy poo-poo star, Mario. I, of course, got gold first every time, definitely. <laughs> Crashed. Now, if you're as ancient as I am, you may well have played Crash Bandicoot Warped on the original PlayStation back in 1998. You know, shortly after the dinosaurs died out. In the game, the first battle is against series regular Tiny Tiger, who challenges Crash in a gladiator arena before a cheering crowd. The battle I is simple. I still don't understand that name. Tiny Tiger? <laughs> Anything you could have called him. Wild Tiger. Giga Tiger, and whatnot, but Tiny Tiger? That sounds contradicting as frick that things looks like a beast. Well enough, but the toughest section involves hordes of lions charging across the arena. If they touch Crash once, it's all over. 
Although, we had a strategy back then. Well, more like an exploit. By running into one of the corners of the arena, the players could actually avoid all of the lions without needing to exhibit any skill whatsoever, which was perfect for me. Fast forward to 2017, and Warped was remade as part of the N-Sane trilogy. The cheeky players like me naturally tried to cheat our way through the boss fight all over again. And we could, but there was a catch. The moment that players hide away in that corner, the crowd throw a whole load of cheese wedges at Crash. Get it? Because the player is cheesing their way through the fight? How humiliating. The devs must have known about the infamous tactic, and rather than remove it from the game, decided to build in a whole extra animation shaming people for using it. It'd be hilarious too if it wasn't actively calling me out for sucking. J Damn. I mean, a strategy is a strategy. You win, you win, in personal opinion, but... Okay. It's on them, I guess. Here it goes. Don't know why you would try to shame someone for doing that. When I believe the creators did something similar to it in a previous game themselves. So, kind of hypocritical. Not gonna lie. Just disappointed. Man, I always knew I'd really screwed up when Papa Amazed would tell me that he wasn't mad, just disappointed. So imagine my guilt when even my video game dad hit me with that same energy. In the totally wacky 2004 release of Katamari Damacy, the player takes on the role of a little green alien guy who's got to roll a load of stuff up to build a star. It's weird, yes, but it's also a very fun time. What isn't so fun is your in-game Dada, the king of all cosmos. This is the guy that's ordered you to roll those balls, and you'd better hope you do it properly. If you find yourself getting a game over, Space Daddy will have a few choice words to say. First, he'll lament that he should have asked your cousins instead of you. Then he'll hit you with the gut Damn. punch line of, This is not your fault, but ours, for believing in you. Gah, aren't games supposed to be distractions from my many failures? Uh... Evidently not. Yes, damn. Arkham Mockery. Batman is one of the toughest guys around. He doesn't strike me as the type to get his feelings hurt by nasty words. I, on the other hand, definitely am that type, so imagine the tears I shed when I played the Arkham series of Batman games. You see, every time that the player fails and Batsy bites the big one, the game over screen features one of his nemeses mocking him. Well, mocking you, really. Riddle me this. What lies on the ground is full of holes and gives off a slight burning smell. Depending on where you are in the game and which foe you're facing, there's a slew of potential game over taunts, each one more scathing than the last. On the other hand, these are seriously cool scenes that adds a lot. Yeah, it really does show a lot of character and all that. Honestly, I don't see what's too bad about it. Honestly, it seems pretty cool. And to be honest, it more ticks me off that I lost than anything else. So, yeah, if someone actually gets their feelings hurt because of this, kind of gonna have to lose a bit of respect for ya. Just saying. Not to the game's world and characters. On the other, if you're as thin-skinned as me, being constantly berated for failure is upsetting. I knew it. You're nothing but a lightweight loser. <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of game over just while playing the Arkham series, so I don't see why anyone would be offended by this. You get a cool cutscene, you get a little motivation to continue, and all that. No, I'm not. The real Batman might not get all down in the dumps over some zingers, but in this case, I'm Batman. And I'm a delicate little flower. But the Arkham games aren't the only ones to pull this trick. The classic platforming series, Jack and Daxter, also oh. tears you a new one at every available opportunity. You play as Jack with his best pal, Daxter, by your side. And ready to throw you some shade whenever you screw up. You came! You saw! You got your butt kicked. 
When Batman's bad guys insult him for failing, yeah, I, I can understand. But Daxter's supposed to be our best bud. Way to rub salt in the wound. Fashionable failure. Anybody remember 2009's Splosion Man? It's a wacky platformer what? starring a guy that can explode at will. In other words, everything I want in a game. It also happens to be pretty dang challenging, relying on precise jumps and impeccable timing to emerge victorious. Because of this, many a gamer got their ass handed to them ad nauseum. But if you accepted the in-game help, things got a hell of a lot more annoying. Just imagine, you've been at it for what feels like hours. With each attempt, you're getting right near the end of the level, but failing at the exact same point. You're this close to pulling your hair out in anger. Then you see a pop-up on the screen. You've died a lot. You can now select Way of the Coward. Ha! As if you'd choose that, you ignore the option. But after another half hour of failed attempts and with bedtime swiftly approaching, you relent. You take the offer and are rewarded with a level skip. Not very satisfying, but at least you can move forward now. Well, the game doesn't let you get away with it that easy. Oh no. For the entire rest of the playthrough, you'll be stuck wearing a cute little tutu. So you're constantly reminded of your abject failure every single second. The sheer humiliation. I get it, I suck. I'll wear the tutu. Detention. Yeah, that's pretty... I don't even know how to describe that. That's just... I, I don't even know what I'm looking at, to be honest. One, I didn't even know a game like this existed. So I'm a bit taken back that a game like this existed. It looks really cool. Not gonna lie. It's hard to imagine that a game where you play as a kid in a boarding school could be any fun at all. But 2006's Bully somehow pulled it off. You can take classes, True. protect nerds, get the girl, and yes, break the rules and be a bully. If you do the latter though, which let's face it, you will, you'll need to make sure you're stealthy about it. Get caught and you'll be given detention. That's right. What better way to spend an evening than in virtual detention, which means completing menial tasks like shoveling snow or mowing lawns. If you mess up, you have to start the whole long-winded thing again. And if you succeed, you've got nothing to show for it. Riveting. This could be the most insulting punishment for failure we've seen yet. It's basically saying if you aren't a big enough boy to win, you shouldn't be playing at all. Of course, this was back in 2006. Nowadays, people play lawn mowing simulators for hours. Who'd have thought? Yeah, that's weird, ironically. We in Bully, you didn't want to do this these kind of tasks, but nowadays we have a simulator where people want to do this? That's a completely ironic way to, uh, you know, Deal with this. Huh. I really don't know what to think about this one. Got it. Anti achievements. I freaking love achievements. The dopamine rush when that little notification pops up is unreal. And my teachers said I'd never achieve anything. But not all achievements are created equal. In fact, some developers love to do a little bit of trolling and give out achievements for absolutely sucking. The 2007 Simpsons uh, yeah. video game is filled with tongue-in-cheek japes at the player's expense. If you pop your clogs ten times, you'll receive the aptly named poem. 
honed achievement. As well as a mocking description belittling your clear lack of gaming prowess, it gives you a whopping zero gamer score. Ouch. There's a similar roast over in a much less amusing video game, 2009's 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand. In this high art masterpiece, you play as Fiddy himself and have to retrieve a diamond encrusted skull from some punk ass bustas, or whatever it is rappers say. If a player pops the game onto easy mode and still somehow manages to die and turn Fiddy into a quarter, they'll receive the dubious honor of the Not Bulletproof Achievement, a reference to the title of the previous game, Bulletproof. Wait, how on earth have there been two 50 cent games? It, once again, it's a zero gamer score award that does little more than show off your ineptitude. Perhaps even worse, it shows off to all your friends that you've been playing 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand. But how far can these non-achievements go? What if you played competently and even cleared the entire game? Well, if you opted to do so on the lowest difficulty of Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, the game spits on your face in the hey. most obvious way possible. Completing the 2010 game on easy nets players the Padawan achievement. Now, this in and of itself isn't so bad. What makes it stand out is the image attached to it. Your reward is a patronizing picture of Jar Jar Binks giving a thumbs up. Jar Jar one of the most unpopular characters imaginable, known for being ah. the goofball that gave the evil emperor all his power. Mm-hmm. Probably not the fanfare you were expecting, huh? Now, if you want respect, go play on a real Jedi's difficulty. Headgear Helping Hand the 2009 Wii title, Punch Out, is the closest I'll ever come to beating anybody in a fight. I'm more of a lover, see? But for those who can't even bring themselves to win a virtual fight, the game has you covered. Any player that winds up losing a whopping 100 matches is rewarded with a unique item, the headgear. This consolation prize can be toggled on before the match to reduce all incoming damage, removing a lot of the challenge from the game. Now, this is pretty embarrassing as it stands, but it gets worse. You see, this headgear is identical to the one worn by the game's very first opponent, Glass Joe. If you're too brain dead to guess, Glass Joe sucks. And he was given the headgear by a doctor after suffering his own 100 losses. So not only is the player given training wheels in response to poor performance, but they're also compared to the single most pathetic fighter in the entire game. Dang, that's got a sting. Damn. Yeah. Like the Pretty out. princesses. If I had to make a video specifically on the weirdest video game names, 2011's The Dishwasher, Vampire Smile, would probably be a she-win. But while the I, name may be strange... I, I'm sorry, what? I'm still stunned about the title. Why that the game is name of any, Dynamite. Everything. You control a character known only as the Dishwasher and his sister, Yuki, in a dark and violent side-scrolling beat-em-up. The entirety of the game looks like the inside of a Hot Topic, and I love it. Also like the inside of a Hot Topic, you're incredibly likely to get beaten down by hordes of stinky zombies. It's tough. When you do inevitably fail hard enough, you'll unlock Pretty Princess Mode, a step down from the basic Easy difficulty. While playing on this secret option, your character takes far less damage and deals much more. So far, so standard. Less standard are the aesthetic changes that the mode applies. The screen is coated in a vibrant pink hue, and hearts float all over the place. Man, way to kill the vibe. It's obvious what the game is saying here. Anybody that stinks to the point they have to play on this setting obviously can't handle the real game and needs to be babied. Hysterically, unlocking the mode comes with the 
the achievement titled Game Reviewers Shall Be Pleased, a jab at the gaming ineptitude of many journalists in the industry. Beautiful. But Vampire Smile isn't the only game to pull something like this. 2005's Ninja Gaiden Black stars ninja Ryu Hayabusa in a challenging hack and slash title that pushes a player's reflexes and skill to the limit. Naturally, I didn't have a good time. If a player manages to get themselves killed three times in the very first level of the game, they'll be posed a question. Do you choose to abandon the way of the ninja? If they choose yes and confirm multiple times that they're ultra mega Mega sure, Ryu's number one fan, Ayane, appears. She laments that she's greatly overestimated her hero and essentially tells him she's taking over. This unlocks the easiest difficulty, Ninja Dog Mode. While active, Ayane constantly supplies the player with helpful items, like these simply fabulous pink bands that increase Ryu's damage. On top of that, enemies do far less damage, and Ayana leaves little supportive messages for our hero all over the place. Aww. Oh, and one last thing. You abandoned the way of the ninja, remember? You're nothing but a lowly dog now, so somebody like that doesn't deserve their face on the title screen, do they? Nope. Ayane has that honor now. Sorry, chump. <laughs> Difficulty Drama when it comes to video games that mock you for choosing easy mode, it's impossible not to discuss id Software's legendary shooters. Both Wolfenstein 3D and Doom let players know exactly what's up the moment you boot the game. Doom's lowest difficulty modes are titled, I'm Too Young to Die and Hey, Not Too Rough. Wolfenstein 3D took that us even dumb. further with its lowest difficulties. That sounds insulting and dumb. And I'm so happy that I never had that problem. Oh, boy. Don't Hurt Me, and Can I Play Daddy? The latter of which comes complete with a little picture of protagonist B.J. Blazkowicz with a baby bonnet and pacifier. How adorable. The two highest difficulties in comparison are called Bring Em On and I Am Death Incarnate. So the message is clear. Choose tough and be venerated, or choose easy and be mocked relentlessly for it. And these difficulties are preserved in many future entries of the franchises. So if you're picking any of them up, just remember, don't be a baby. Yeah. Nemesis. One of the main selling points of 2014's Middle-Earth well, Shadow of Mordor is its revolutionary nemesis system. It's also one of the most ingenious ways a dev has come up with an entire built-in game system almost solely meant to roast you. The concept is simple. If the player is ever defeated by one of the many orc enemies of the game, that orc will get a promotion. They'll become stronger, scarier, and legendary among their peers. They were the ones that finally bested you. But in Shadow of Mordor, the player character, Talion, has merged with an elven wraith named Celebrimbor. This means you can resurrect after each death and go back and seek revenge against your slayer. It's a nice contrast to something like 2014's Dark Souls 2, the notorious poster child of video game difficulty. In that game, rather than the enemy becoming stronger, the player becomes weaker with each death, with a reduced maximum health pool. Damn. It's not exactly a roast, but still a punishing mechanic that's integral to the game. Now that yeah. orc that bested you in the Shadow of Mordor, that's a different story. You see, that orc will remember you, just like you remember them. What this translates to is a nemesis, somebody who beat you and knows it. Your nemesis will often belittle, mock, and roast you whenever you come into contact with them, especially if they beat you more than once. Is this some kind of joke? I killed you already! That way, you'll be reminded all the time just how badly you screwed up, making you want nothing more than to wipe that stupid orky grin off its face. Sure, it's annoying getting bad-mouthed by one of these guys, but it really adds to the world-building. 
There's nothing more satisfying than finally getting your hands on the jerk who's been hassling you and letting them meet the business end of your sword. In game, I mean. <laughs> Definitely in game. You okay, dude? Unlockable insults. Easy mode. You should know by now, some games love roasting you for choosing it. But there's one game that still manages to roast you for it, even though it doesn't have an easy mode. Huh? Well, let me what? explain. In the notoriously unforgivable prequel, Devil May Cry 3, players oh, are... Oh, yeah. It was a good game. Honestly, I'm a bigger fan of Devil May Cry 4, but I still like 3. Yeah, a really unique fighting style for the main character. That I still can't wrap my head around even today. It was a weird one. at first only able to play the game on normal difficulty. However, die three times and you'll be greeted with a little message. Easy mode is now selectable. Yay! Congratulations, I guess. If you give in and choose it, you're presented with a prompt, asking whether you'd like to choose automatic or not. This setting essentially performs complex button combos for you, so instead of quickly hitting a load of different buttons in a specific order, all you need to do is hit one. But Devil May Cry is literally all about learning to perform stylish combos on enemies, so having the game get fed up and just offer to do its entire main gameplay mechanic for you is uh, disheartening at the very least. And whether you choose automatic mode or not, finishing the game on easy awards players with this bizarre spot Flash screen. Prequel doesn't mean you can be a newbie. Hmm. Did I just get called a noob? I think I did. The message is clear. The game is intended to be played on a minimum of normal difficulty. If you suck hard enough, it'll throw you a bone and give you the baby mode, but it won't let you forget it. Heck house. 2020's juggernaut release, Final Fantasy VII Remake, managed to successfully recreate and remix the already iconic original into one of the most popular games on the PS4. But there's one part of the game I didn't enjoy, the Hell House. <gasps> <sighs> For those not in the know, the Hell House is probably the hardest boss in the game. A bombastic nightmare of a battle that takes place in a huge arena in front of an adoring crowd. I certainly threw some controllers during my first attempts. But the insane difficulty of the boss is only one ingredient in this angst pie. This particular so. arena fight features announcers who commentate on basically anything that happens. So, every time you screw up, and you will screw up, believe me, they make sure you know about it. Talk about insult to injury. Okay. What a hit by the hell house. There's no way that didn't hurt. It's hard enough to concentrate on the fight without being made to feel like you have the hand-eye coordination of a stroppy infant. Now, it's worth noting that the announcers aren't biased. If you play well, they'll hype you up. But let's be real. A lot of us are never going to perform well in a boss battle this tough. So the knowledge that they could praise you, but you're just not good enough, only serves to infuriate you further. Ah. True. Woo. Well, uh, I've had just about all the roasting I can take. <clears throat> Which of those did you find the most hilarious? And if you know of any I missed, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Honestly, I think this is like... Oh, I don't know. The most harsh thing to remember. Never really got all those kind of insults and whatnot. Thankfully.
and I wasn't really given a bone. Uh, when it came to certain gameplays and not, and whatnot, which I'm really thankful I didn't now. Because... Yeah, I don't want to get told of how bad I am while playing a video game. Every single freaking second. And if you enjoy that kind of thing of being insulted, are you an M? For those that understand the phrase, I think you all understand what I mean. But seriously, if you do enjoy being insulted, are you an M? Because that is the only possible way that would be the case. That or you just are very thick skin. Which I do not know if that's good or bad. Is that good or is that bad? I mean, it's going to be thick skin, but to be thick skin and enjoy the, the roast, I don't know if that's good or bad. I can't really think or think of the answer. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction video. If you did, hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe button to support the channel, support the content provided, and so on and so forth. Hit the notification button to be notified immediately when your video comes out. Other than that, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!